We're back. We're back. I've never been here before. That's right. Taking Ty to a new place. Now, Burn Bucks 2.0, part two, because Ty finally got done fighting fires. I missed last week, opening week, so we're here finally. We're gonna go get it done. They've got the bucks picked out already. Just gonna go up there and find them and kill them. It's gonna be easy. <laughs> yeah, super easy. All right, well, we made it up here about 15 minutes ago. I threw my glass up and found two bucks right off the bat. So not the kind of bucks we're looking for, but um, it's nice to see some deer. And uh, we got about, I don't know, we'll finish glassing the last five to 10 minutes of light and we'll go up to our teepee. But man, it's, uh, it's gonna be hot tomorrow, 95 degrees and we got a full moon, so tougher conditions than uh, when we came up here before. It was a lot cooler, so. Anyway, hopefully we can find some better bucks and get one on the ground. We made it up here to camp and uh, the teepee's still here, which is good news. Aaron and those guys left it up um, and we were hoping it was here, but it sounds like Aaron's uh, sleeping bag might be a little wet. Pretty excited, it's always fun being up in the high country. Wait all year for this moment and we're here, so pretty awesome. A freeze-dried meal was a welcomed event this night. See, one of the reasons I love hunting with Tyler is because he always pushes me past what I think my limits are. In this case, our hike that usually takes a few hours took under two hours with him. Ty and I are gonna split up and glass two different spots and yeah, Ty's opening day. My opening day. Each morning brings great anticipation, but also great anxiety, because in this particular area, you only get an hour or so every morning to pick through the bucks before they disappear into thick timber or the backside of the face in search of a cool, shady bed. You gotta be quick in the morning to spot something you want so you have time to go after it. Belmer, we were up top here and we glassed up a bunch of bucks this morning. We probably saw 30 bucks all together. Nothing over 160. There's a couple that are cool looking bucks, definitely mature bucks. So Aaron was glassing from a different spot and he ended up finding three bucks together. There's two that are probably over 160. Um, but we can't see it from here. So we left our crap up top and we're gonna drop down to air and we're gonna go put eyes on them and see where they're bedded and might make a stock, but. So, uh, Belmer and I made it over here to Aaron and by the time we got over here, don't know what happened, if they just got hot or what, but they all took off and scattered. So, we never got a look at, at those bucks. Aaron says that they're nice though. Yeah, I think they're a little better than a couple of these nicer bucks over here, so but they did not do what we wanted them to do. So I think the plan is uh, I'm gonna head back up to where my pack is, eat some food, and then we're gonna go try to take a look at those 10 bucks that were together and see if we can find where they're bedded. Um, and then if nothing happens there, we'll just start dropping down and kind of move super, super slow and just glass as we move and try and pick up these bucks bedded, so. When the midday heat smacks you in the face and makes you want to melt, you have two choices. You can talk yourself into curling up in a ball in the shade and taking a nap, or you can drop off into the canyons and slowly glass every single spot of shade and search for velvet tips. I suggest the second to maximize your time. We got one bedded buck. Um, not what we're after, but starting to pick up bedded deer, so. Hopefully we can pick up a big one. It's hot, but the wind, it's windy, so that's good. If we can find something, good. All right, we 
found a pretty dang nice buck. Beautiful four point with great forks. Just as we were thinking of how Ty was gonna make a play, it got up. So we're just watching it to see if we can re-bet it. Nice buck though. As Tyler dropped down the ridge to cut the distance off the bedded buck, I stayed up above so I could watch it all unfold. After a decent amount of time had passed, the buck got up from his bed and actually moved into the juniper trees closer to Tyler. It's not very often that after shooting at a buck, it actually moves closer to you. My theory is that because the arrow landed behind the deer and the wind stayed good, the buck actually moved away from the sound of the arrow towards Tyler. We were sneaking in and we were making like our final approach. We were probably 120 yards from the buck. And then uh, I looked down in his bed and he was gone. <laughs> so he, I knew he didn't go to the right and he started moving off here to the left. So we, we started creeping over side hill and we were gonna cut him off because there was two other deer over here in this opening that we glassed before we made the stock. And so I figured he was gonna go right to where those deer were. So we started sneaking over and I see a two point and there's another deer with a bigger body standing in the trees right next to it. And they were standing up and it looked like they were kind of feeding up. So I put a big bush between us and the deer and then we were closing ground fast. We were probably about 60 yards away. And, uh, and I was just gonna sit down and wait for them to feed out. And then <laughs> Belmer tells me that there's a buck staring at us down below, look down, it's the buck that we were stalking before. So let one loose, went right, right between the antlers. Uh, it was pretty windy. But then after after that, he stood up and he was just kind of looking around and then he turns around and he starts, I catch him kind of trotting over down below us, side hilling, and then he starts cutting up this ridge. So I started arranging some dead trees, trying to figure out where he was gonna pop out. And the one tree I arranged was like, uh, it was 58 and he came up and I thought he was, he had moved past it quite a bit and then he came up a little. Mm. 
And I thought he was still level with him, but he was about 50 yards. So I, sh I held for 58, 60, and uh, I made a good shot. I felt really good about the shot. Took my time, he stopped there for me. Bubbles level, pin settled good, and then squeezed through the shot and went right over his back. So just misjudged him. Wow. Then he ran up even closer. He kept running right to us, but then he came out from behind this log and it's just his head sticking up, so I couldn't take a shot, and then he took off. But pretty fun, pretty good stuff. Now we're gonna go get on some other bucks. There's like 10 of them right over here, so see if I can connect with one of those. <laughs> Some days you can't even find a buck despite hours and hours of glassing and miles and miles of hiking. And some days you're stalking and flinging arrows all day. Today was the latter and it was awesome. and put away wet last night, but as my <laughs> grandpa always said, he was born at night, but not last night. We'll figure these bucks out. <laughs> another day, another dollar. Born at night, but not last night. That's a good one. <laughs> Every morning on the mountain is like Christmas, but better. You only get so many days on the mountain a year, so each morning is cherished, and you never quite know what you're going to glass up, even though you may have a slight idea. separates itself to where it's a good stock. There's a heavy, heavy three point and it's got a lot of bucks, little bucks surrounding it right now. So we're not gonna make a play on him. And then there's two other nice four points, but they're bedded in an open burn. So no no play on them. So see, how, see what the afternoon brings. Tyler's gotta leave after today, so. conservationist he's here to improve the gene pool that's why yeah that's why I'm here that's why he's here let's go hunting a unit with a lot of deer is both good and bad lots of bucks to sift through and choose from but also lots of eyeballs constantly looking for danger that can quickly spoil a stock for the record I'd still rather hunt a place with tons of deer
I just caught a glimpse of them. They took off and went up to the right. The two point that was with the four point that I was going after, he fed up the bottom of the draw, just like 40 yards to my left. And uh, he winded me, stared right at me, and then just turned around. I held perfectly still, not think still turn around. Took a couple steps and looked back and then didn't see anything but blew and took off. All the other bucks went with him. That four point was right behind him. So if, I mean, if that buck would have just gone up another 20 yards, that four point would have fed out at 40. And it would have been game over. <laughs> just like, we're getting close, getting close. I screwed up that first one yesterday, but that one today just needed a little bit of luck to go our way. But this is tough, tough country to stalk in. It's super steep, extremely dry and rocky, and. It's just hard to get around in, so we did what we could. Didn't work out, but there's more bucks around to go after, so we're gonna relocate some tonight and hopefully get them in the morning. As my grandpa used to say, we're a day late and a dollar short, but at least I got a hot wife. <laughs> um, it was another awesome day in the high country and got close, but no cigar, so we got one more shot tomorrow morning, make it count. But uh, Ty's made some awesome stocks and has been right there. Just it's the thing with bow hunting, everything has to go just right. <laughs> and it's hard for so many variables to go in your favor, but. I was stalking into this group of bucks, about 200 yards away I spotted the target four point across a canyon, and about the same time I spotted him, Tyler spotted him as well. It was risky to go after him due to the group of bucks between Ty and the four point, and the four point having deer with him, but with only a couple hours left of the hunt, Ty had to roll the dice.
I just met up with Ty and Belmer and uh, we got a blood trail here. Yeah, we started picking up a few spots up top along here. Uh, it took like probably 150, 200 yards before it really started bleeding. And then we were picking up quite a bit and then it just disappeared. And then every time I've ever had that where the blood quits, it's because they started bombing downhill. So sure enough, we started coming down here and we just found a big river of blood. It looks like he fell down right here. There's hair all over the place. So, so from my vantage, I saw the buck come into that bed and I was just like, man, I hope Ty's right there. And then all of a sudden I just see the other two bucks scatter and I see the buck Ty hit and he's going 100 miles an hour down this hill. And he hit about, I don't know, probably 75 yards above us. And he started getting wobbly and his back end was shifting. And then all of a sudden, boop, 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 boop. it was cartwheel after cartwheel into these aspens. So pretty sweet. Wouldn't have a couple days. Heck yeah. Light up the building, raise up the torch. They want the power, I got the source. Signal the smoke and bring in the boys. Pull the alarm and bring in the noise. This is him. Last day for this trip. Um, pretty, pretty fortunate to get it done. We, I was gonna hunt the morning and then I had to get out of here. I have to work tomorrow, so we got a lot of work to do. But uh, this morning, this, he was actually the goal. We saw him last night, put him to bed, and then we picked him up right away this morning. And uh, some other bucks, we thought it was actually him, were working towards us, so. Belmer and I made a play on them. We got close, we got within like 130, 100 yards, and that didn't work out. The, those bucks fed underneath us and, and we couldn't make it happen. So uh, Aaron was glassing up above us. He said that this buck and a different buck was with a group and they are coming down this hillside. So we tried making a stock on those and uh, we were just coming over the edge where we are gonna be able to see him and get a shot. And I think it was this buck actually had come up to the top of the ridge and busted us. So that, that stock went awry and we sat there for a minute and just uh, trying to figure out what to do and we figured these bucks would go up to this timber patch that we always see embedded in. And uh, sure enough, we start sneaking up there, drop in the top and we start seeing these beds that they've been bedding in. And so we sneak down to the trees just above and it's like 35 yards above the bed and I start peeking around and I see this buck walking through the trees up from the opening where he was feeding and he was coming straight towards that bed. So I told Belmer, like, get the camera rolling and uh, get it on that bed. And sure enough, he comes in, walks through the bed and his head's behind the tree. So I had perfect, was able to draw. He didn't see me, held it on and made a good shot. He took off running and only made it a couple hundred yards. So. Uh, for I was supposed to go home yet last night and we decided to stay one more day trying to get it done this morning and I can't believe it, it worked out. Bow hunting seems impossible most of the time and then all of a sudden when things happen right it comes together so just gotta keep after it. Gotta love those. camp luckily but I'm completely out go back to camp and get some water and pack up camp and then we'll get out of here that beautiful sucker she's a beaut Clark she's a real beaut the gram I cherish every minute I get to spend in the high country it pushes you to your limits gives you some spectacular views, is usually game rich, and to top it off, I got to hang out with one of my best friends. You simply can't beat that. And the cherry on top was Tyler Shaw, an awesome butt.
Well, our feet are hamburger, <laughs> knees are sore, but we made her. So that's all she wrote. Good three days. We uh, were supposed to be here for two, but we stayed today and it paid off. <laughs> Got the sauce. Signal the smoke and bring in the boys. Pull the alarm and bring in the noise.